international on multifamilies. Then we do some, uh, some other items in between them. We'll give local data at the end, and then I give some predictions at the very end. So we're going to start with single family homes. Now, the, now remember, most of the national stuff you're going to see is going to be charts. So just for the heck of it, understand that the 2023 is usually going to be the orange chart. It's usually going to be the one that's orange, which obviously the color's not coming out real good here. But uh, you can follow where it says down there what 2023 is. So the first thing we're going to look at, and this is again national data, New listings for homes are up 9% year over year. Well, that's not a bad deal. So we go, okay, we got new listings, that's up. Pending sales is down 7%. Well, we'll get into why that is. It's not too hard to figure that one out. You can also see where 2023 tends to tail off a little bit. 5% of listing prices had price drops, which is still not too bad. Because remember, this is everywhere across the country. So we're merging data from California, New York, Colorado, Texas, Florida. That didn't necessarily happen here in Ohio. Median sale price, that's up. Okay, that's not too bad a deal. But, uh, why is that up? Well, because the homes are selling really quickly. Okay, now here's something we need to pay attention to. So if you look at this, you see the chart where we went back in 2010, we're back in here at COVID again, but for, you know, as far as where we are right now, there is not a lot of delinquencies. You follow this line where we are right now, not a lot of delinquencies for single family homes. So if you are in the market for grabbing homes that are foreclosed or something like that, not a lot of buyer business right now. Now that is going to change a little bit, but just to give you that idea, that that's a national trend. So nationally, California, New York, you know, Florida, same issue. It's all back down. Delinquencies are pretty darn low. So if that's your market, not right now. 26% of homes were sold above list price. Okay. Now, if you look at this from the standpoint of, well, why? It's because people are really desperate for homes, even with the interest rate. There are folks that have to move. We call that migration, by the way. We have a couple slides on that. They have to move. They have to understand. They have to go. They have to get rid of their house. They have to buy a new house. They have to live somewhere. So if you think about what we do, what real estate investors do, I mean, I don't care if you never want to swing a hammer or you just provide money or you want to get down with the, with the saw all day long. What we do is we provide housing for people to live in, either rentals or to buy. Twenty-eight percent are under contract in two weeks. That's a third of all houses out there under contract in two weeks. So it's still a good market right now, but that is probably going to change. We'll talk about some local things here. But what this does tell you is that if you've got a house right now and you want to sell it, particularly if you want to do something like seller financing, now's a great time to do that. <coughs> Active listings, now what they did here is they've actually created a, a line that basically starts in 2020. So we referenced the COVID <coughs> issue, and you see this drop that goes down, comes back, drops a little bit again <coughs> as the interest rates. But in a sense, active listings nationwide again are 800,000. That's, you know, you drop from where we were in 2016, where we were 1.45 uh, million. <coughs> That's a, that's a significant drop, but we are coming back. Yeah, we saw the COVID thing. We saw the double blip. This is, these are called, uh, uh, it just gets back to the line. So, okay, we're, we're not doing too bad there. Median days on market again. This is, this is total market. Remember, you're gonna see one side that says it's, it's sold in two weeks, another side that says total market. Why?
Greater Dayton RIA is a great source of information for real estate investors. You can learn what you need to do to succeed. You can learn the different opportunities that there are in the marketplace. And you can meet a lot of people that know about this from their own experience. It's a fantastic organization because you can network with uh, more seasoned investors. Uh, you meet all kinds of different vendors uh, each time. Uh, insurance companies, uh, title companies, there's always a different group of people here. And even though I've been involved in real estate since 99, every time I come to a meeting I learn something different. Um, you could also find contractors here. Um, it's just a really great way to network. The benefits that I've gotten from the Reggie Real over the years is being able to tap into a pool of knowledge from experienced investors, experienced speakers that allow me to overcome any obstacles I might have from what I'm not familiar with. Reggie Real, we learned that this is a team sport and being a landlord requires quite a few people to help. We found our account attorney, property manager, realtor who furnishes the lease for the properties. And I believe the appraiser is in 2010 to invest. The whole team was there. I had a property manager, realtors who had deals, and now I have four houses that are all turnkey solutions. I've invested in private LLCs. I didn't bought enough. So by joining an organization like GD Rea, you too can learn how to be a good investor. And we are an approved vendor with GD Rhea. We've been with you guys about four or five years now. We love networking with the members, and we're here to help. So anything that they need help with, you can find us here every meeting and uh, ask us whatever questions you need to. You guys have a location?